So off we go, we're recording. So third session on probability was called the normal distribution. So in today's session, we will consider the following topics. The introduction to the standard normal distribution, standardizing the curve and the normal standard variant Z, and determining probability from the normal distribution. So let's have a look at what this standard normal distribution is all around. The curve of normal distribution is like that shown in figure one. Extremely important one can be expected to be produced when a data sample is large. This curve can be described by a mathematical equation and is the basis of much of the work in advanced statistics. Many natural occurrences, um, such as the heights and weights of a group of people, the sizes of components produced by a machine, and the life and length of certain components can be approximated to a normal distribution. Yeah. So the saying is if you plot the frequency of a variable, you, get, you end up, if there's a really big sample, you end up with this curve that looks like a bell. It's called, often called a bell curve. I can use that to predict how many how many people would lie between certain values of that variable. And we do that using probability. Okay. So normal distribution curves can differ from one another in in diff in four ways. They can be based on or have different mean values. So if we take a thousand people today and measure their height and get a mean value. We could take a different thousand people tomorrow and that would have a different, slightly perhaps, but a different mean value. They could also, both samples, have different standard deviations over the two days. And the variables have different values and different units. So we can talk about people, we can talk about um, widgets in a box, so they're different units. And they can have different areas between the curve and the horizontal axis. And as you're going to learn in this session, the area between the curve, so we could have a low bell curve, so quite a low area between that curve and the, and the x-axis. We could have quite a steep bell curve with a bigger area. So they can have different shapes, okay? Because uh, this, the issue of this probability is all round finding the areas of various portions underneath that curve, as you're soon gonna find out, okay? To be able to use the um, normal distribution curves in the way we want, we have to do what's called to what's called standardize them and that process goes like this yeah so standardizing the curve and a normal standard variant the mean value first of all the normal distribution curve is that standardized as follows a the mean value of the unstandardized curve is made the origin so we actually if we if we take that curve and we take a mean value and we say the mean value is right down the middle. So we've got an equal half either side of the mean is the assumption. Okay. And then anything either side of that is a number of standard deviations, either bigger, going this way, plus standard deviations, minus standard deviations that way. Okay, and we get that from calculating what's called a Z value. The horizontal axis is called is is called out in standard deviations, as I've just said. This is done by letting the Z value equal the value we're interested in X, take away X bar, which is the mean, the central value, and divide them by the standard deviation. So that's how we calculate a value of Z. 
more about that shortly. Okay. The other thing that's done for standardization is it is standardized that the area, the red area beneath that bell curve, between that and the um, X axis is said to equal one unity. So the whole area equals one. 0.5 red area either side of the mean. Yeah. So that that's what's called standardizing the curve. You're setting that up to do your calculations. Right? So all the problems that we're gonna look at, you'll be given the mean value will be given the standard deviation and you'll be asked to find how many samples lie between certain values. And it's all around finding the Z value, looking up the probability in a table, we'll come to that in a minute, and then using that to find how many objects lie in a certain area of this curve. All right. So, Determining the probability from the normal distribution. So if the area as shown between those in that diagram on the right there, between the two Z values, Z1 and Z2, the area gives the probability the variable will fall between those two values. All right? So when we um, when we standardize it, that's called a standardized normal curve or a normal probability curve. And any normal distribution may be represented the same normal curve. The area under part of the normally distributed probability curve is directly proportional to probability and the value of the shaded area shown can be determined using this formula here, where Z is equal to that formula there. Okay, now this formula here involves you using mathematical skill called calculus, namely integration. You haven't learned that yet, and you're not being expected to do that because, in order to save repeatedly determining the values of this function, tables of partial areas are included in mathematical formula books. And I'll include that a table such as that on the next page. So there it is. Okay. So we what we do is we calculate our Z value. Yeah. So let's imagine we have a Z equal to 1.36. Yeah. The first two digits are down the left hand side. So we look for 1.3. Yeah. And then the final third digit is along the top here. So we go down that line and across that line and we get a probability equals 0 0.4131 for that value of Z. Yeah. And as you'll see, when we're looking to the left of the mean value, we get Z values that are negative. It doesn't matter whether they're negative or positive because we're looking for the area between the value we're looking at and the mean. And then we use those to calculate the various probabilities of the values we're looking at. And that's better served with a couple of three examples that we're now going to look at. So instead of having to use that formula, you can use this table. It's included in these notes included in next week's notes and it's included in the brief for the assignment for you to be able to use. Everybody understand how we get a Z uh, value of probability based on a Z value from that table? Yeah. yeah? Mike, what, what actually is the Z value? Of, is it just a stand? Where, where do you, I know you get it from the table, but what actually is it? You know, you calculate the Z value, right? But what 
the issue is, Lewis, we might, let's say, hang on, let me put another slide up there. Let's say we got a bell curve, right? For weights of every everybody in 500 people. And I'll mean weight is, I don't know, um, 80 kilos. Yeah? Yeah. We want to know how many people are um, between 80 and 84 kilos. All right? That's, that's this area here between them two, if that's representing 84 kilograms, is proportional to the probability that people will fall in that area. Okay. So we calculate this, this Z value here from Z is equal to X minus X bar over the standard deviation. That gives us a value for Z. And the units of this um, x-axis are standard deviations. So what you're finding is how many standard deviations is 34, is 84 kilos away from the mean value, 80 kilos. Okay. Yeah, the further, obviously, the further you are away, the bigger this area is going to be, and therefore, the more of the thousand people are going to fall in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That will become a little bit clearer when we're done one or two. All right, because you'd calculate this Z value from X, which is the 84, minus the 80, the mean, divided by whatever the standard deviation was, let's say S2, all right? So you've got four over two equals two. What you're saying is 84 kilos is two standard deviations away from the mean. Then when you go to the table, you've got a Z value of two exactly, we're 0 0.4772. Uh, where's my extra slide gone? Here it is. So probability equals 0 0.4772. That's the probability that you'll fall into this area shaded here. Yeah. And if that sample there's a thousand people, you'd multiply that by a thousand, and that would tell you that there are um, 40, 477 people that would fall into that weight group between yeah, 80 and 84 I, kilos. I think you've answered my question, then I was just going to throw a curveball in there and say that obviously that shaded area then is 47.7% of the sample taken. Exactly. It is. Because yeah. it, all equal, it all equals a one because we're using the mean value as, as ground zero or et cetera. Yeah, yeah. All right. Happy with that? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We're only looking one side at the moment. In some of the problems, we're going to be looking both sides of the mean. And in some of the problems, we're going to be wanting to know the bit that sticks out on the end. Yeah. So we'll have a look at a couple of three of the different problems that you can come up against in in this style of question now. All right. So we start off with the mean height of 500 people. So let's make a look at what we've got in the question. 500 people. is 170 centimetres. So X bar, the mean, is 170. And the standard deviation, sigma, is nine centimetres. Okay, now, with these problems, that's really helpful 
if you just sketch out that normal curve and make sure you understand the area that you're looking at. OK, so here I'm going to draw the x axis, quick sketch of the normal shape, the bell shape, and a line down the middle letting us know that the mean is 170. Yeah, it says assuming the heights are normally distributed, determine the number of people likely to have heights between 150 centimeters. So over this side to the left is covering the, the people that are lower in height than 170. So we put a line here saying that's equivalent to 150 yeah, centimeters. And this area, the green area, will give us the number of people that fall between 150 and 170. And then on the other side, in red, the red area, put another line down there, 195 centimetres. And the red area will give us the number of people who are between 170 and 195. So what we'll do is we'll add those two prob probabilities together to give us the total number of people between 150 and 195. Do you all understand that? So you separately find these two areas, green and red, add them together, and we'll get the total area between 150 and 195. So we need to find, we'll call the red area ZZ2, and the green area ZZ1. Yeah. So we go Z1 is equal to um, X, 150, minus x bar, the mean, over the standard deviation of nine. See what you get. Minus 20. Nope. You need, to, you need to make sure you use the fraction button because if you put it in as it stands, you'll get the wrong answer. It's all of the top line divided by nine. Minus 2.2. .2. Minus 2.22, if I remember it from the last session. Yeah, two recurring. Yeah. You need three digits there for the table, you see. So entry in table, probability from table. All right, I've got it on the next page. I've made a, I zoomed in on a table. 2.22 is 0 0.4868. That's what I was going to ask you as well, Mike. Just while we're here and talking about recurring numbers, in the assignment, do you have to put the recurring symbol? Because I can't figure out how to get it in on the words document. Um, no, round it to three, maybe four, appropriate number of significant figures, Lewis. Yeah, okay. So rule of thumb, three or four, but it does kind of depend on the problem. All right, thank you. If you if you round too much in these problems, you can make a significant difference in these statistical problems, as we went through last week. So you have to be a bit careful. Round and certainly round and too early. All right? Okay. I'm just trying to get me solutions file up so I can see these. Save us a bit of time. Right. So that's that's the green area. So the green area, probability of falling in the green area is 0 0.4868. Change to red. 
Z2, yeah, is um, a value 195 minus 170 over 9 equals. Two point seven seven reoccurring. Two point seven eight then, yeah, rounded to three. Yeah. And they're standard yeah. deviations. SDs. They are. It's worthwhile remembering that. Standard deviations. From there. Because one standard deviation is nine. Yeah. We're going two point seven eight standard deviations above. We're going 2.22 standard deviations below. Right, entry in table. So the probability in the table. From table. Equals. Look on the page. 2 2.78, 2.78, 0.4973. Yeah. What we want is the whole lot added together. Overall probability equals 0.4868 plus 0.4973 equals. Point nine eight four one. Yep. Therefore, number of people. Um, between 150 and 195 centimetres tall equals 0 0.9841 times the sample size 500 equals 492 people to the nearest person. Yeah. Everybody happy with that? Yep. So we, when we go on either side and we want the total between those two bars, we find the individual areas and we add them together. All right? That's actually quite easy, really. It's not too bad a task. All right? So let's have a look at one that's slightly different now. For the group of people, so it's the same group of people in problem one. So we got um, 500 people. The mean X bar is 170 centimeters. And the standard deviation is nine centimeters. Take a note of that. I says find the number of people likely to have heights of less than 165. So if we sketch this curve again, we know 170 is down the middle. One six, if we say 165 is there, we're interested in everything to the left of it, less than 165. There's no Z value. However, we can't do that from the table. What we need to do is we know that the whole, whole area beneath the whole curve is equal to one. Therefore, the area under the left-hand half is given by 0.5. So 
So if we find what I'm now going to mark as a red area, if we find that red area between 170 and 165 and take it away from the whole area of that half, we'll have, be left with the green bit. Do you all understand that? So is each side underneath the graph equal to one or is it the total underneath the, the graph is equal to the one? The total underneath the whole graph is equal to one. Therefore, because the mean's been set to the middle, the area underneath half the graph is 0 0.5. So the area bound by this blue line I'm now going to put on here, this area bound by that whole blue bit is equal to 0 0.5. Yeah. So well, if we find the if we find the red area and take it away from the blue area, we must be left with the green area, mustn't we? Yes or no? Um, just a general question. Will the mean yep. always be in the middle, or is it? Yeah, because that's that, that's part of the standardisation process of the curve. Is to say oh, yeah, right, that, yeah. that the middle represents the mean. Yeah. Because the mean is zero standard deviations. Yeah. So what we're going to do then is find this red area. So first we'll find find red area. Z is equal to, and we got the 165 minus the mean 170 over the standard deviation 9 equals 0.56. Yeah. And uh, value in table. equals so we want 0 0.56 0 0.56 0 0.5 6 0 0.2123 yeah so if we multiply 0 0.2123 by the 500 people we'll get the number that fall in the red area yeah so probability of uh less than 165 centimetres equals 0 0.5, the whole left-hand side, take away 0 0.2123. 0 0.2877. Yep. Therefore, number of people less than 165 centimetres tall equals 0.2877 times 500, the number of people in the group, equals 14385. Yeah, 144. Do you go to, you go to 144 to the nearest person. Remember, statistically, that's how many you would expect to have that were lower, shorter than that. Making the assumptions that the data fits this standardized, normalized curve. All right, normal distribution. 
Any um, further questions about that one? Um, only that I'd have, in my head before you'd said 0 0.5, I'd already half to 500, but I suppose it's easier to to do it as a half because it's always going to be 0 0.5. Oh, yeah. I, uh, yeah, so you, you, you'd, you're thinking of half on the 500 and multiplying it by um, say that again oh yeah because what you're saying is that half the people well they expect to be in the bottom half so 250 yeah is that what you're saying yeah that's what I was saying yeah and you multiply that 250 by what? I don't know, because when you said like 0 0.5, I started following the math on that side instead of the yeah. other side of my brain. Yeah. Remember, prob probability of people falling in the whole half is 0 0.5, because we've standardized with the mean in the middle. Yeah. So you don't you don't half the sample because that 0 0.5 would tell you you got 0 0.5 times 500, which is 250 people fall in this left hand half. Statistically, you'd expect to get 250 people in this half and 250 people in that half, wouldn't you? given that you standardised the curve. Yeah, and then because I'd worked out the red area, I was yeah. always think, I was thinking I was going to take the, obviously the, the deviation of the red area away from the 250. Now what, you, what you've got to do before you bring the number of people into it, you've got to find the probability of the value you're looking for, which is 0 0.5 minus 0.2123 from this red area. Yeah. Yeah. So what what I would what I was looking at was obviously that um, if I knew the 0 0.56, then I knew what was in that area, so I could have used the table there. I know that that's going to make up 0.5. So. I, that's where it, it, that's yeah, just the way that my brain that's just the way my yeah. brain had got but I, when, when you started talking about it i realized that 0 0.5 is an easier way to go about it anyway yeah well no but 0 0.56 christian is, is a standard deviations z value that's not a probability i got you yeah yeah that's a that's that's saying that 165 is a bit as around about half a standard deviation away from 170 and as the standard deviations are nine you can see that that distance there is five centimeters and one standard deviation is nine so we're around half a standard deviation away from the center you then have to go to the table to get the probability you can't use this 0 0.56 value directly with the number of people to get an answer that's 0 0.56 standard deviations. Is that yeah. clearer now? Yeah. 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 Whereas this 0 0.5 down here is the probability that person will fall in the whole bottom half of that that curve. Because the whole curve is worth one, probability of being in the whole curve is one probability of being in half of it is 0 0.5. So the whole area encased by blue is worth 0 0.5. Yeah. You're going to take away from it the probability of being in the red area. It leaves you with the probability of falling in the green area. Yeah. Or not. Yeah, that's fine. I was just, um, I was thinking in my head when we started before we said 0 0.5, I 
knew how many people if I knew how many people were going to be in the red area which was 0 0.2123 um, that's why I was thinking but half of it is easier than thinking of it as a number a larger number anyway yeah yeah all right I'm sure you'll get it after we've done a couple more so looking at the same group of people again find how many people are likely to have heights of more than 194 centimeters so again we've still got 500 people we've still got a mean x bar of 170 and we've still got a standard deviation sigma of nine yeah standardized curve there's 170 we want to know how many people are greater than 194. We need to find this green area here. All right. So what you're going to do is find the red area I'm now going to mark and take it away from 0.5 be left with the green area. So five minutes, have a go at that. See if you can find out how many people fall in that green area. Can I put the table up as well, Mike? Yeah. I can put the table up, but I can't put both up. All right, is it not the little table? You can't copy and paste it now. Uh, yeah, can do, I think. A minute. Let's just take those scribblings off it. Can you see that? Is that too big enough? 